We're back with our important One Health series, and today I'm joined by Vet Donald Lynch and Vet Conor Garrity, and they're going to talk through about antibiotic usage. We're on a farm. What happens to the antibiotic when they prescribe it? What's the best action around storage, safety, and administration? It's real simple today, but getting the simple things right is actually one way we can tackle antibiotic resistance in our farms. As any practicing vet, I have responsibility to human health, animal welfare, and animal health. We can address this problem by working together as food producing farmers and vets to reduce the need for antibiotics and reduce antimicrobial resistance. To look at some of the practical requirements when we're dispensing a drug, or in this case we're really talking about antibiotics, to a farmer, we need to keep some things in mind and there's some legal requirements of what we need to do. So there's records, certain records we're required to keep. So number one, we need a record of where we got the drug, as in who we purchased it from. So when I dispense, let's say for example, I'm going to look at here a bottle of penicillin. So when I dispense this bottle of penicillin to a farmer following a, an examination of the animal, I'm going to give them an invoice. That invoice is going to take into account the name of the product, the batch number, the expiry date, and that's all going to be recorded. So that's your intake record or your purchasing record, which is going to have to be recorded on your own farm record. Then I suppose the other main record we look at is a prescription. So what is a prescription? A prescription is, I suppose the best way of putting it is, it's the usage instructions for that product. What you should do with it when you go to the animal to treat it. That prescription is going to have a lot of information on it. So it's going to have the product's name, it's going to have the expiry date, and it's going to have the batch number of that product, which is all going to have to be recorded on your farm records. But then, more specifically and more practically, it's going to have the usage instructions for the product in question. So it's going to tell you how much to give, how often to give it and when to give it, and what route to give it. So if I look here at an example, like I have a bottle of penicillin here in my hand, so if we say a typical 400 kilo animal, the prescription is going to say that that animal is going to need 20 mils of penicillin given once a day, typically for three days, and it's to be given into the muscle. Now, all that information then is going to be recorded on your own farm records. Now, I suppose there's two ways of recording that, broadly speaking. There's the more old-fashioned, traditional system where we record it on paper, but now, I suppose as time has moved on, we've moved to a more soft copy or computer-based records. So in our case, we'd be issuing a lot of our prescriptions from, in my case, my iPhone, and that can go directly to the farmer's email, where that can, in some cases, be automatically put onto his farm software where he just has to acknowledge that it came in and he did it in accordance with the instructions on the prescription. At this stage, we've got the drug, we've got the prescription, and we're going to the animal to look and see where we should inject the animal. So look, one main thing to point out, we're here today and we have a nice quiet cow and she's in a calving gate. What I would say is, if you're actually going to inject an animal, you want to make sure she's secured and health and safety. Obviously, when you go to inject them, there's a risk that they're going to kick at you. So make sure you're not in a position that you get injured. We're not going to inject this cow here today. We only have her here for demonstration purposes. Okay, so Connor, we're looking really at two main types of injections. We're really talking about antibiotics and how we administer them. So you're talking about subcutaneous and intramuscular injections. So I would say with subcutaneous injections, just two main sites. But maybe first of all, if I say, what is a subcutaneous? So subcutaneous is under the skin. And if you look here, behind the shoulder, over the rib cage, you've got lumps of loose skin. So you can actually catch a lump of skin and pull it out. The other side, I'd say up here in the neck, you can do the same thing. So if we're given a subcutaneous injection, we want to catch it, pull out the skin, and we're going to stick our needle in here. And as I pointed out, you can see how she can kick if we had a needle. So you're going to stick it in there and inject it into the space that's just lying underneath the skin. Okay. When we look at needles suitable for that, well, I have a couple of needles and syringes here in my pocket. Would you talk a little bit about, there's a couple of syringes and I have a few needles here. Would you talk about appropriate needle sizes? Well, first of all, I suppose we want a syringe size that's suitable for the volume of uh, antibiotic that we're giving. So uh, if we want to give 25 ml, we'd like to have a 30 ml syringe. Uh, whereas if we're giving 5 ml, a smaller syringe is probably more, more useful. Uh, with regard we, to we had talked about penicillin and the example I was given mm. was about 20 mils of penicillin. So, so 20 mils of penicillin, you don't want to be using the 10 mils range because you'd have to inject her twice. 
So uh, it's, it's obviously more sensible to use the larger syringe that you can give it in, in one injection. Some antibiotics, it might say if you're using a volume more than 15 ml that you use two sites, but that's on the label and beyond your prescription and those instructions will be there. And the syringes should all be packaged and sterile? Absolutely. These syringes are single-use syringes. They're, once they're in those packs, they're sterile. Uh, so as long as you're opening a packet uh, for the first time, you know that the syringe is sterile and that it's safe to use. Okay, I, I have a number of needles here, so I, I have a small green needle and going on sizes, that's a 21 gauge needle. So this is a 21 gauge needle, it's about three quarters of an inch long, typically uh, for use in smaller animals like um, pets or maybe lambs, but not so good for giving penicillin to a cow now because the bore, you have the length is number one and then you have the bore of the needle. The higher the gauge, the narrower the bore is. So for something like penicillin, which is thick, you would use a larger bore needle. So don't let's see you have a 16 gauge needle there. So larger bore is a smaller <coughs> number. Larger bore is a smaller number. Uh, so this is this is 21, this is a narrower needle, this is 16, this is a, a, a wider needle, more suitable for large animal um, uh, penicillin or similar and substances. I have a 14 gauge here which is probably the biggest we use. Yeah. Would you use that for penicillin? Maybe in a bull or a very large animal, but typically we use that for giving calcium or magnesium where you have large volumes going in. We want okay. to speed it up a bit. So we had talked about subcutaneous injections, but with penicillin that would largely speaking be going intramuscular. Yeah, so... Um, Do you want to show people where yeah, you'd so, inject uh, a cow traditionally, traditionally people, uh, farmers, may have used the hindquarters to inject uh, intramuscularly uh, around this area here. Now, the issue with that is, of course, that's a very valuable piece of meat and we don't want to put any injections into that as far as possible. Whereas if we use the neck muscle, it's a much lower value piece of meat. So if, if there's any issue, it's, it's, it's of less cost uh, to the farmer once the animal is slaughtered. Um, so basically what you're trying to do is avoid the shoulder and there's a thick band of elastic there that keeps the head up. You don't want to put it into that, you want to put it in the muscle. So a simple rule that I use is a hand out from the shoulder and a hand down from the top, which leaves you with this part of an area here. Um, and that's muscle, and that's where, you, that's where you'd like to put it. Okay, and we go straight in with the needle. Straight in with the needle. Where it's subcutaneous, you go in in an angle. There's an angle. Where it's muscular, yeah. straight in. So the needle has to pass through the skin. The tissues underneath the skin are a bit fat before it hits the muscle. So your typical needle will be inch, inch and a half, depending on the size of the animal, and you want to go straight in to ensure that the antibiotic is left in the muscle where it's designed to go. Okay. Now, I know you already referred to the injecting in the hind quarters. I'd often have seen problems. So, the typical example was where people would inject up here in the hind quarters, and what they'd do is they'd slap the animal and then they'd stick in the needle. Okay, so they'd slap her to take away the reaction of it. But you would often see reactions there and abscesses. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, I would really back up that point. I've sometimes gone to the meat factory to see it, and you will see a quarter of a carcass being dumped for that reason. So it's hugely important to say for an intramuscular injection, you absolutely should be up at the neck. Absolutely up at the neck, yeah. Uh, if you have trouble restraining her, if you don't have a head gauge, you can use a halter. There's many ways you can do it, but uh, the neck is the place to give um, an intramuscular injection. In the absolutely. Okay, just in relation to the, the product, when we have the product in our hand, and maybe penicillin is a good example of this. If you look at this bottle, uh, you can see here we have a liquid, but we also have a settled down portion down the bottom. So you can see here just underneath the label that the bottom half inch or so is solid. So it's important to say you need to shake every product and see them fully suspended. And it can take a nice bit of shaking to get this. Absolutely, and it's very so. important because then if you don't, the first injection you take out is, is quite dilute and won't be effective and the last one will be too thick to actually go through the needle. So, okay. yeah. And also with some products there is specific instruction, so it's important when you check your prescription. Like for, for example, there's some antibiotics that if you mix the smallest drop of water with them, so if you wash out your syringe, it'll cause that antibiotic to go hard in the bottle. Certainly, if you take time to read the prescription that the vet provides you, you will see all the instructions necessary and how to administer the product. So now we have this, it's well shook, it's obviously well suspended, there's nothing stuck in the bottom, so we'd be ready to go to inject it. And just for example, we'll show how to fill a syringe, so maybe you might give me a 16 gauge needle to go with that. Okay, so we're going to attach the needle firmly. So the way the needles go out to syringes, 
push it on firmly with a little bit of a twist. And when you want to take off the cover, you pull straight off, whereas if you want to take off the needle with the cover, you twist it and remove it. So it's quite simple to do that. Putting it on, firm pressure on, and pull straight off. And then insert it through the clean cap and withdraw the plunger to fill the required. And as we had said, we would have been 20 mils. We're going to make sure that we expel any air out of the top. And now we have 20 mils, which would be ready to inject into the animal. But I've said this animal is only here for demonstration purposes. We're not going to inject them. When storing medicines on farm, it's important to store them in a locked medicines cabinet. The reasons for this are they're out of direct sunlight, securely locked away, out of the reach of children. With regards to safety, if we inadvertently splash or ingest or inject ourselves with some medicinal product, it's important to read the data sheet. The data sheet will tell you what to do. If it says seek urgent medical attention, then that's what you should do. If it says to wash, it, wash away with cold water, then that's what you should do. It's important that you follow those instructions carefully. Now we have the animal treated, we need to dispose of the unused or empty bottle into an appropriate container to ensure that there's no environmental contamination with antibiotics. So I'm going to place the bottle into this container, put the lid back on it, and that container is going to be collected by a licensed waste contractor and disposed of appropriately. So today we've talked a lot about AMR. And as Connor already said, in our case, we're usually dealing with antibiotics. So it's antibiotic resistance that we're primarily concerned about. I think as a vet and in the work I do with farmers, we realize how important we are in this whole area. And maybe sometimes we need to stop and think about the importance to human health. And if one of our children or one of our parents was in hospital and became the victim of a, a bacterial infection, and suddenly we're told we don't have an antibiotic to treat that infection in our child, how would that make us feel? So I think we, in, our, in the Irish food producing industry, which is massively important to us, we need to remember and realise the importance of the proper use of antibiotics in our farming systems to ensure that we have them as farmers going forward to treat sick animals, but also, and probably even more importantly, that we have them into the future to treat our children or our parents when they become sick with a bacterial infection.